Good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our Jump Pro Connect and Protect webinar with myself and Ross Drummond. Uh, just a quick introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Gary Collins. I'm the technical lead MDM consultant at Academia. Uh, if you have any MDM related uh, questions regarding services, please reach out to me. I'll put my details in the chat box, which you can all see on the right hand side. Um, just a quick note for myself, um, to all of our Academia, Toucan and Vital York customers that are on the webinar today, just want to say a big thank you for joining and hope you're having a good day. So after the session, we will be doing a quick Q&A section. Um, please feel free to leave all your questions in the chat box as we go along. Um, there's a slight delay between the presenters and everyone who's viewing us. So just fill them up as we go along and uh, we'll mark them as a question and I shall read them out to Ross at the end. Um, so Ross is a systems engineer for Jamf who will be presenting for us today. So I'm going to hand you over to him. Ross, over to you, mate. Thank you, Gary. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you're all well on this slightly overcast day here in London. So today, um, this was kind of pitched as Pro Connect and Protect. It's kind of just an entire overview of um, of the Jamf uh, suite of, of products. I think how I've kind of decided to frame it would be, I guess, a bit more around the idea of you know of going from <clears throat> where we're you know where we were at, getting ready for the new academic year, you know what that would look like it, it, and kind of like probably what a lot of you have all experienced over the last few months and sort of a digital transformation and, and sort of how we can fit in with that piece. So um, yeah, as Gary said, that is uh, it's me. Um, I don't look like that. I've grown my hair out and especially over lockdown, it's got even longer, but um, I look vaguely like that in the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm a systems engineer for UK and Ireland. Um, so yeah, what I would say is some of this is, you know, is, is aimed at, at folks that maybe don't know that much about Jamf. So it is, it is high level in parts. Um, like Gary said, if you guys have questions or you want to do a bit more technical deep dive, um, let's get into those at the end. I'm happy to stick around um, the, the content of the deck itself. Probably going to last about a half hour or so. And I know this is 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 a time for a little longer than that. So, so yes, you can see here of our agenda is kind of talking about digital transformation. Um, a lot of these things, I, I, I've actually sort of tried I tried to phrase it in, so it talks about the office, and I was trying to think like what would be appropriate in, a, in an educational environment. And then I was trying to think, is it school? No, is it campus? No, it sounds a bit American. So I've used office and things like that there, um, but do know that I, I'm sure you'll all will understand what I'm on about. So so what is JAMP? Uh, you know, we, we help organizations succeed with that. Well, that's kind of our mission statement. Um, we're the sort of the world's leading platform for for managing um, the Apple ecosystem. We've got over a decade of experience doing that. We've got um, you know more than thirty eight and a half thousand uh, organizations using Jamf, seven thousand uh, K twelve schools, a thousand global universities. You know um, all the top unis all over the world use Jamf. Nine million teachers and students, um, and then obviously in other sectors we've got you know, twenty two of the top. 25 tech companies all using Jamf to to organize and, and manage their estate, whether that be iOS, tvOS, iPadOS, or macOS um, around the world. So, so this is my point here, which is the office, but I think we can all kind of put our imagination hats on and, and see what it, it can be various, but we all, you know, for all intents and purposes, all work in an office. And I guess the point we're trying to make here is that, you know, work patterns have changed a lot, as I'm sure we've all experience over the last decades you know we used to use the telephone um, i can't remember the last time i used a desk phone um you know fax machines um if you've ever had to deal with doctors sometimes i've that's the only time i've ever had to use a fax machine recently um you know but and also just like equipment at our desks you know things like desktop machines computers um you know conference rooms accessing file servers locally you know, and then obviously at the office, we've also got these things called co-workers. I don't know if any of you remember what those are, um, to see them face to face. And then, you know, there's even those folks that, you know, those weird ones at the time that only work from home. How bizarre. Um, and, you know, that was that was kind of the way of way of the land. Um, but today, I guess the home has become, well, as for, for most of us, the home has become the office, um, you know, and all those you know, wired wired desk phones have become mobile phones. Uh, you know, 
I moved into my flat, I bought this flat last year. We don't have a, a landline. Um, I've got fiber internet, but that's it. Um, you know, and, and all conversations are done over email or Slack, you know, and our, our desk can be anywhere at this point, as we've all probably experienced in the last few months. Um, you know, whether that's a coffee shop, uh, the library, or, you know, um, your kid's bedroom. Um, I was talking to Kieran, he's like, I've been doing a lot of work in the car, waiting for my kids to get out of nursery at three o'clock. So, you know, there's a lot of different places um, that things can be done. And all of our data is stored in servers that are on the, you know, are, are cloud accessible now. You know, I think we all can remember the cloud boom as being the, the hot thing. But the idea being that, you know, this stuff is all over the world and can be done in action from anywhere. So, you know, a lot of companies, um, a lot of conversations I've always had um, about sort of, you know, digital transformation, um, you know, they're like, well, you know, we don't really see the need to, to change. We don't need to think of having this little cartoon here. Um, but I think what we've all learned is that, you know, a lot of us and what's been amazing about, you know, some of our IT team, the resilience of our IT teams is, is how quickly we have been able to adjust. You know, for example, at Jamf, we shut our offices um, one day and within 24 hours, we were all mobilized as a as a, as a workforce, you know, at home. We were able to continue to do those. And that, that came down to the fact that, you know, we have had that sort of preparation for that digital transformation. And we're, you know, a modern company, but a lot of folks, you know, they don't have that outset. But what I think we need to understand is that, you know, what does that strategy look like and you know what type of technology are you guys you know in your institutions um schools what are you putting in place for you know if if this happen you know when this happens and if this continues to be the way of life um you know do we have to change people's roles because they uh they're working at home do they have to do do we have to have different rules have them expect them to do different things just because they're at home um you know understanding that people you know there's generations of students teachers you know employees coming into the workplace that are not used to sitting at a desk working off a desk phone and all those sorts of things so what are, what are those plans in place to to make that the reality um i don't think any of it well i've certainly not been lucky enough to be able to work from home like this but um you know the idea that you know people need to work anywhere and, and have a desire to, to work anywhere and do anything. Um, and, you know, IT is the kind of key to unlocking all these um, pieces of the puzzle to, to allow us to be able to, you know, turn on our laptops from the car or ping my, my iPhone when I wake up in the morning and, and get everything. Um, and I think, you know, the struggles of with kids and things like that as aside you know for the most part of us we've we've been able to see or certainly my experience is that working from home hasn't meant that i've worked uh, less I've, I've been able to do you know i've still got all the tools to do my job so i guess where you know someone like jump comes in is is how we can fit into that that user experience and that that impact of of being you know giving you uit departments the power to facilitate, you know, all those remote working um, experiences. And we, and we kind of do that sort of three ways, um, you know, talk about the onboarding. So we've got the new academic year. There's a whole new raft of students, uh, raft of students coming in. Um, you know, what are they, what are they going to, how are we going to get them into the systems? How are they going to be enrolled? How's that going to work? What's that going to look like? Um, where are they going to be when they do that? And then obviously the experience, you know, we talk about employees here, but your students as well, what that experience for them is. And then obviously the culture experience as well. Like, so, you know, you don't want things to be kind of clunky. You, you are, you know, the IT is very often the first, you know, point of contact or experience that, you know, beyond the initial interview process they'll have with, with your institution. So that, that streamlined system and that setup will reflect, um, what what your kind of mission statement is at the university how you how you want to be looked upon and, and how that's valued so the three ways we kind of talk about those things um or the three points are, are around tools access and trust right so you know you need the right tools to to be able to to get you know get your work done so you know that 
these days that's probably a laptop and a smartphone or you know an iPad, um, you know, just something that can get online. You know, maybe it has a keyboard and mouse. Again, I've had a lot of conversations with folks that the idea of a keyboard and mouse is slowly going to go the way of the dinosaur, and I can totally envision that when you see young folks using iPads and things like that, they just have stuff and stuff happens. And I think that's going to kind of become the way of the world. Um, and once they've got those tools, you know, we need to give them access to the data and services to do their jobs. So, um, you know, that could mean opening your networks up so that folks can connect from home, um, or it could mean, you know, that the data that you give them access to is stored securely on the internet, you know, and using a service such as, you know, a cloud, cloud service to, to store that. And then we have to ensure that, you know, we give them these tools, we're giving them these access, we have to ensure there's a level of, of trust there. So, you know, that can be, you know, simple things like an HR policy and, and an education perspective. But then there's also, you know, um, giving folks the, the tools they need, but with the security policies that you wish to, to see in place at your institution. So um, it may mean that you kind of have to rethink what that looks like um, and, and have some of those conversations, especially if you've got, you know, kind of a lot of security policy and posture was implemented way before any of, you know, talk about digital transformation was, was implemented. So um, usually a big talking point. So I guess that's where our, our suite of tools comes in, um, you know, that tools, access and, and trust. So, you know, when you've got your tools, you're going to need something to manage those tools. So that's where Jamf Pro comes in, you know, so whether it's iPads, uh, MacBook Pros, iMacs, Mac Pros, you name it, Apple TVs, you know, that's where Jamf Pro comes in. We're, that's the tool that's going to be able to manage all those devices um, and do the doing for you. And then when it comes down to, to the access piece, you know, we want to we, we can manage the devices but how are they going to access um our universities you know what's the identity management piece of that that's where jamp connect fits in because that's a uh, an application that sits on top of the mac and allows users to authenticate and ident you know and log in with your institution's um identity provider and, and ensure password synchronization and i'll get more into that shortly and then from a trust perspective you know, our newest product, which was uh, launched in EMEA uh, back in April, um, is, is Jamf Protect. So that's the idea is as an enterprise endpoint protection specifically for and purpose built for Mac OS. So utilizing all the built in tools already that are in Mac OS um, and then, you know, adding an additional uh, visibility and protection on top of those to kind of give you full endpoint protection on your Mac estate. So, you know, we look at onboarding, you know, the speed at which organizations, you know, have to get folks onboarded um, and get people productive. You know, there's been studies, uh, there's a few stats coming up. Um, I certainly know Fletcher, uh, Previn at IBM, you know, talked about the, the folks that the, the fact that people that when they get given the tools that they want to do, they want to use to do their job, they're more likely to stay in their roles. And I'm sure we've all, um, you know, I, I can, I can think of tons of, you know, conversations I've had with with different folks where they said, yeah, you know, so the the dean or the this this tutor has just gone out and bought a Mac on his, you know, his company credit card because he just wants to use that. He doesn't want to use um, the laptop we provided them. Um, but what we've seen is that, yeah, when organisations deliver that strong onboarding experience. Um, the numbers are that employee uh, retention rates improved by 82% and the productivity of your employees is 70% uh, because I guess they're, they're using the tools they want to do, uh, they do their jobs on. So, you know, when we kind of talk about the different use cases and scenarios, um, you know, something like Jamf Pro, you know, it's all, it's really important to have that efficient onboarding, you know, get it out of the box, power it on, you know, you've set up their, their, their HR put their credentials into your identity provider, you know, that source of truth. And then, you know, we, we get the, the Mac out to them. Um, when it gets to them, it needs to be that seamless experience so that it's the same, you know, whether that's on iOS, iPad OS, um, you know, on their Mac, we want to make sure it's, it's the same easy onboarding experience. And then I guess 
there's also, you know, we get those third parties, folks that come in temporarily um, aren't there for a long time. Maybe they're bringing their own tools in. You want to make sure that they've, they're locked down or, you know, they have functionality at, and access to the tools you want. Um, or we give them a temporary device that we can quickly, you know, power up and wipe. Um, and that's where, you know, again, something like Jump Pro would come in handy. So a lot of this is all focused on zero touch deployment. Um, and with Jump Pro, there's another stat to be thrown at you. Um, on average, Jump Pro customers spent 80% less time provisioning. And I can I can certainly test that in, in previous roles. You know, if you use Apple's device enrollment program, um, you know, things will, will be a lot easier for you because I'm sure we've all kind of experienced and seen this sort of legacy provisioning. Um, some of you might still be, you know, using academia to do some of this for you today. Um, you know, you purchase your, your devices, um, you know, you, you preload an image on it, you get them all unboxed, you ethernet them all together, they all image, then you put them back in a box, store them in a cupboard. Then a new user joins the company and, uh, you know, they turn it on for the first time. It says, oh, there's a ton of updates. So that, you know, as soon as it gets back in the network, it's a slow and laborious process. Um, you know, that you can see that that's going to take up a lot of time. But, you know, when you've got Apple School Manager and you've got Jamf, you know, you can order a device from Apple, ship it directly to a user. And because Jamf is in the middle and is acting as that device management piece, you can say the moment it connects to the internet, do this, do that, install this company profile, install this policy, um, give users the ability to access these applications that they're going to need to do their jobs. But they don't need to install, you don't need to install, you know, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Edge. We can say Safari is on there, it's built in browser for Mac OS. But if you open up self-service, you can install the browser you want to use in the institution. And that will just always save you time when it comes to, you know, how to build these big uh, legacy images. And that's kind of, I'm sure if you've ever been on jabs.com, um, bored to death to see in this image. But it's it's a powerful one because it's the idea that, you know, again, anyone who's ever joined a company, very rarely have you seen this kind of experience where you just get the laptop straight to your house, you know, power it on, and, and that's it. It kind of does its doing. You know, there is no step three for the end user, but I think, you know, when you look at this and you come at it from an IT perspective, if you're going to be, you know, administrator for Jamf, is that, you know, that step three is where you've done all that work, but you've only ever had to do it once, or maybe you only ever have to, you know, uh, keep up to date if there's a specific new package or a new installer or a new product that you want to deploy out. Um, and we've been, you know, we've been doing this since 2002. So, you know, it's the reason that folks like Apple use us and SAP and, you know, all, you know, Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, you know, you name it. So the other thing that's important when you're you're doing these uh, enrollments, and this is, we're showing an iPad here, but we can get this exact same experience um, on Mac OS, is that enrollment customization. I talked about that kind of that cultural experience earlier. This is where that comes in, right? So, you know, the first time you turn on the device, you connect to the network, you're greeted with, you know, a welcome to page, you can do stuff like you can have an acceptable use policy, um, but you can also do some really cool stuff. I've seen, um, you know, certain companies show their ad campaigns or, you know, like a welcome to video, you know, a message from the CEO, all these sort of different things. Equally, you can have a EULA and, you know, make sure they accept that. But what it does is it gives you, it kind of sets the table and gives you a kind of a little, you know, welcome to the company and, and makes it feel a bit more personable so that when they do get their device up and running, you kind of feel like they've, they've got an understanding of what's happened on it. Again, as opposed to those old days where you go to the service desk, some guy takes a laptop away from you, types in his admin credentials, does X, Y, and Z, and then gives it back. And you're not really ever sure what's happened. Um, so, you know, that, that enrollment customization piece, again, built in with Jamf Pro um, or is, is, is really useful. Um, when it comes to that access piece, that's where Jamf Connect comes in and, and is, is, is really helpful because what that's going to allow us to do is, you know, we talked about the provision in there, getting the device out into the wild, but maybe we don't want users to have, you know, just generic accounts that they set up themselves. We want to have them, you know, log in with an, our identity providers. So, you know, it's something like Azure, something like Okta, uh, one login, something like that. They can, you know, they can sign in with their their email address and password that they've been sent in advance. Um, 
they can set up multi-factor authentication during that login initial login process if they haven't already uh, and create their account and then once that account is created we can you know with jump connect we can ensure their password stays in sync and again here's another little stat for you i'm sure if anyone's ever worked in a help desk um, and come back from a summer break or a christmas break um, the password resets 31 percent seems low to me um, i've done some uh, workshops with some other identity providers. I think Okta says 50%. I think one login say 40%. But either way, you know, up to half of your time is spent if you're on a help desk doing password resets. And with Jam Connect, we can, again, empower our users um, to, to know where to go to reset those passwords um, and ensure that they've got that single identity everywhere. Because it's, you know, it's all about that kind of thing of like, you know, when, you, when users have got that choice, they can choose to have the device that you want to use, you know, something like an Apple laptop, they're probably choosing that because that's what they've got at home. So when you give folks, you know, the tools that they're already used to, you're kind of getting that inbuilt sort of tier zero level of IT knowledge. You know, users will know, you know, how to turn the Wi-Fi off or connect to a different network, or, you know, they know how to restart it, or maybe they know how to get system preferences. So, you know, it helps with those troubleshooting steps because the, you know, the knowledge base is already, you know, kind of, got a foundational level so you know all that stuff you know ties in with the employee experience right and that's i guess the most important piece and what i'm trying to hammer home here is that that digital transformation piece you know it's about making it departments about making you guys your guys lives easier um but it's also about making sure that you know it is a customer service role right it's it, we're there to serve um our employees and ensure that the company is secure and our, our colleagues are able to do the work that they need to do in as seamless a way as possible. You know, and you've got, here's Martin Lang there. Um, you know, SAP moved from their own MDM product that they built to Jamf because of our focus and understanding of the user experience. Um, you know, and I think that's kind of goes to show sort of cement the point I'm trying to make here. So, you know, with, with Jamf Pro, and again, uh, as I mentioned, that employee choice piece there, you know, giving users, that's that's the beauty of it, right? So, we're you know, we're not saying, I'm not saying Apple everything, and we work with Microsoft, we have partnerships with Microsoft, we have integration with Microsoft Intune. Um, it's about giving your users the choice to, to work on the devices they want. And with Jamf, you know, once, if they choose, you know, Apple, when they've got that um, product, that when they get it, we provide them with all the resources and applications that they are going to need to do their job. So, you know, in that curated resource there, you get a little snapshot of um, self-service. So, again, you might not want to give all your users administrative access, you know, but you also don't want them all calling up the service desk saying, hey, can somebody just come in and pop the password in? Or can you remote in and pop the password in so I can install or update Evernote or... Uh, my email settings or something like that, what you can do is you can, again, empower your users with self-service and uh, get them going themselves. And then, again, with Jack Pro, secure and privacy, making sure all that stuff's locked down, energy saver settings, you know, sharing settings, um, restrictions. Um, you know, you can, you can maybe you do give your users all admin access, but you only want them to install applications that have been signed by Apple. So we can enable gatekeeper settings or... We want them to, they can have admin access, but they can only connect to these specific Wi-Fi networks. There's all these different sort of uh, ways and paths and sort of choose your own adventure as it comes to security and privacy. But with Jamf Pro, you know, we're leveraging all of Apple's MDM framework. We've got our, our own policies in place. So you can you can choose how the, the, the devices are set up. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is kind of, again, another stat for you. On average, Jamf Pro customers spend 65% less time managing policy and settings changes. And again, that's because we do things like smart groups. So um, rather than having to you know, scope to users, a new, a new person joins, or I've got to move them into that group, I can do stuff like you know, if the device is a MacBook Pro or is you know, a MacBook or just you know, is a laptop, then they're going to get these energy saver settings. Um, or they're going to get these security settings because I know they're going to be, you know, moved around a lot more. Or if they're in, you know, I can integrate with LDAP. So I can say, hey, if you're in this department, do these things. You know, if you're in marketing, okay, you're going to have access to all the Adobe suite. Um, 
And that's all based around configuration policies. Uh, so configuration profiles, rather, you know, policies and, you know, and custom scripts and things like that as well. And, that, and the way we do that is because we've got the binary agent from macOS. So, um, you know, Apple have, Java has existed longer than Apple offered MDM, um, so mobile device management. Um, and as a result, because, and, and because of that, we've we've always had the Jamf Pro agent. And what that allows us to do is, you know, their powers combined give you complete management over the device. You know, so when it comes to stuff like app management, we can push out all the applications from, you know, the Apple School Manager. Um, so, you know, any, any apps that are available in there, you know, users aren't going to have to put in their Apple ID. You can go via Apple School Manager. Again, it's a free, free program. So if you don't have it, get yourself signed up to it today. Um, and with that, you'll be able to, you know, purchase all the apps from one place. And you can even, you know, when I say purchase, you actually, you can, you know, procure free products there as well so that users don't have to, you know, sign in with their own Apple ID to get things like WhatsApp desktop, things like that. Um, and just make, it means again, because you're using and leveraging Apple's um, ecosystem to do a lot of that, you know, you're spending on average 90% less time managing the apps. For those apps that aren't in Apple's, um, App Store, that's where the Jamf Pro Agent comes in again, because we can push out the applications via their installers um, using the Jamf Pro Agent. And then we got self-service, right? So I kind of talked about you know, empowering users and, 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 and letting users do their own thing, feeling like it's their machine. You know, I think a lot of us probably do feel like that anyway. Once you know, you know, if you're given access to your own device, you, if you've got more you know power over it, you tend to take Bit more care in it. I know um, some IT companies will say, you know, after X amount of years, you have the ability to purchase this device. You know, and, and as a result, what you often find is if folks know they get to keep it, <laughs> they take a hell of a lot more good care of it. Um, but in terms of actually just doing their work on there, that's where self service is is so powerful and so useful. Um, and it can be customized as well, right? So you can see there we've got a little iMac with the Acme self service. But what I've seen and and uh, seen great success with is when folks kind of personalize um, the self-service portal. So they put their company logo, the institution's logo, and maybe do a little campaign around that. You know, maybe brand it with what you your service desk is called or the IT team is called. And so folks associate that as the place they go to to get stuff done. Um, and, and again, there's a little stat for you. Jam Pro customers see a 15% reduction in help desk tickets because Again, it's all those ones that can you come and install this from you? Can you add this printer for me? You can put all that in self-service so that um, your users don't have to bother your team. And you can get on with more important projects and other things that you want to do in your environment. So the last sort of piece, and again, this comes to that, um, the security is, is Jamf Protect. So um, I guess the biggest thing with Protect uh, is it gives visibility um, for your InfoSec team. Um, I know a lot of different departments or max, you know, departments have never kind of, or IT department, uh, infrastructure departments rather, have never even really seen what's going on on the max, or maybe don't, maybe they don't care, they just don't know, or they've not had the ability to do that. Um, with you know, max aren't impervious to malware. They you know they have the ability to to be infected with stuff. There's you know great built-in tools um, with Apple security, you know, and with Jamf Pro. Um, you know, we can enable, like I mentioned before, Gatekeeper, um, XProtect in there, the malware removal tool, all those things. You know, they exist on the macOS uh, operating system to ensure, you know, the device is secure. But with Jam Protect, we get visibility into all that, as well as um, kind of leveraging known, known threats and malware, um, and then actually looking at sort of potential threats. So this it's more about the the things that we don't know about yet that you know Apple and security teams aren't aware of. And we can isolate and and using sort of built-in tools from um, Apple, like their game kit engine, as well as like known analytics. And again, I can get we can get way more into to protect if that is something of interest to you. You know, we can set up a, a personal a demo of that because it is a, it's a whole new world of things of, of security on macOS framework. But the point being that using a tool like Protect alongside Jamf Pro, um, we can use those smart groups again and pre present recovery instructions to our end users. Again, we're enabling our users to take responsibility. So whether that's just, you know, 
they install an app, try to install an application that's not signed with a developer account. We we send them a little notification saying, hey, this wasn't signed by Apple. Here's our IT policy. This is the reason we don't let you install these these applications. Any questions, contact the service desk. Um, or it's you know they've downloaded a Flash Flash installer, but we have used Protect and we can see it wasn't signed by Adobe and it potentially uh, contains some malicious software, we can say, right, I'm gonna turn your Wi-Fi off. Here's the phone number for the service desk, contact them, because we're gonna need to make sure your device is okay. Um, or you can go the whole hog and say, you know, if, if, if we've seen malware, you know, try to be executed, we can remotely reinstall macOS and, and again, immediately redeploy the apps. Again, all with that, sort of touch of a button and I'll be able to do cloud, I'll be able to do remotely because it just relies on that internet connection. So um, with Protect, we get we get that. And with Pro, we can kind of get that full remediation experience. So you get that complete um, overview of everything on your Mac estate. Your security departments are happy. Um, you're happy. Your users are happy. So that's kind of uh, an overview of our portfolio. Um, I'm just giving you, this is like a slightly extended version of that. Um, we talked about Connect, Pro, and Protect. Um, if you are looking for a lighter touch uh, when it comes to you know education, there's Jamp School. Um, if you are a small, medium business, or you are just wanting some mobile device management for your home, for your 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 family's iPads and iPhones, I would definitely recommend checking out Jamp now. Um, I think it's free for the first three licenses. Um, in fact, I think it might actually be free until September at the moment because I think. Just again, because of this, you know, of the world we live in at the moment, they, that was something that um, Dean asked for to happen. Um, and then, if you haven't ever been on it, uh, definitely check out Jamf Nation. Um, there's a hundred thousand Apple admins on there, all talking about absolutely anything you can imagine. Um, and if you can't find uh, the thing you want to know, ask the question, and you're going to find a really helpful uh, world of people. Um, yeah, I'd say Jamf Nation is probably one of the friendliest. Um, I've certainly used that in my, you know, earlier in my career pre jam for asked questions on there, and, and folks have literally, literally done my homework for me, which is is pretty incredible. So yeah, can't can't recommend that enough. Um, and then there's obviously the other parts of Jam. Again, alongside academia, or you know, we can offer you professional services. Um, we've got training, so you know, there's uh, the Jam 100, which is a free course you can take online right now. Um, if you're an existing Jamf customer, training.jamf.com, there's a whole raft of things in there. Um, but yeah, Jamf 100 gives you a complete kind of overview on you know what is Apple MDM, what is Apple in the enterprise, you know what does that look like. Um, and then again, I guess the other thing that we should mention is that when you use Jamf, you get our support. And because we only use Apple um, and we only work with Apple devices, you know all of our support team are experts in in the Apple world. So. You know, gone are the days if you kind of call up a thing and then they sort of try and dig dig down to find the person that knows what the Apple um, software looks like or how it works, you know, when you call maybe one of our competitors. So that concludes uh, everything I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So, uh, Gary, back to you. I guess if there's any questions, um, I can potentially stop sharing my screen as well. Um, I can see them. Uh, keep the keep the question slide up. All right. um, we'll keep it there. So um, currently, no, there's not been anything posted to the right hand side. But um, thank you very much, Ross. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, if you guys have any questions, please do post them on the right. Um, me and Ross will awkwardly wait around for a little bit <laughs> to uh, see if anyone wants to ask anything uh, regarding what we've just gone over. I mean, we could play the uh, thank you video and we could stick around. So if anyone yeah, if does, I think, does that work for you, Ross? Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Oh, we have one. Cost of training course beyond Jamf 100. Uh, I believe they're all on jamf.com forward slash training. Um, I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but I do know they're discounted at the moment because some of them are obviously virtual. Uh, but we are running virtual 200 and 300 classes. Um, so definitely... Uh, yeah, reach out to your academia. 
uh, person and they can um, advise you on the cost of those at the moment. Yeah, if you reach out to me, I'll put you in, in touch with the right person. Um, it's okay, we'll wait for a few more if they come in. Uh, we do have another one, Ross. Is will yeah. Jump Protect do away with other products? I mean, depends what products you're talking about. But yes, uh, I think I've had this conversation a couple of times. I certainly see, well, it's a conversation to have with your infrastructure department. Can it do what other products on the market do for Mac? Absolutely. Does it do more than what other products do on, on the market for, for Mac you know, when it comes to import protection? Yes, because it's purpose built for Mac OS. Um, so there's definitely a conversation to be had. And again, your infosec departments, if you're using something like a SIEM or a SIM, I don't, I've still not figured out standard way to say that, but S-I-E-M, you know, we can we can export all that data into there. So um, if your infosec departments are using that, they're going to get a whole host of, of visibility on things that they've never had visibility on before, um, all the while getting the same level of protection from our uh you know there's there's a, a database of known no malware that we kind of do threat prevention on quarantine that as well as you know all the anything that you know could be deemed as suspicious activity on the mac that isn't necessarily just a known piece of malware we can we can look at that and you can decide what happens where you know x and y equals you know so you can choose what happens to the devices like i said before with a you know whether it's an adobe install or it's not signed by Adobe and, and things like that. Perfect. Um, another one is any example HE sites. HE. Yes. A higher education. What? As in like you know, uh, T like high schools using Jamf. Yeah. If you could elaborate a little bit more on that question, I will come back to that one. That was all that was on there. So. Okay. Um, the next one I'll go to is uh, it says you've talked about the benefits of Jamf, but no demo on how to set up Jamf Connect to manage devices. Is there a workshop available for that? Uh, so when you buy Jamf Connect, uh, one of the things you get is a jump start. So uh, somebody will come and help you set it up for you. Um, that's kind of part and parcel of a purchase in the product. If you're wanting to know more about that, you know, reach out to yeah your your t your person at uh, academia. I can certainly take you through a demo. But yeah, the 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 point of the product is that you know when you purchase it, we'll we'll walk you through what you need what needs to be done to get it work in your environment. Um, we also have a, a demo version, so you can install it on your a test device of your choosing, and then connect to one of our own identity providers. So you can see how it works in practice. Um, as well. Excellent. Um, the next one is, does Jam Protect negate the need for McAfee and malware bytes? Would using all three together be overkill? I think it would be overkill, but I guess yeah. it's up to you. <laughs> um, you know, I've worked at places where there were three or four um, application, you know, different security tools on devices at any given time. I guess, again, it, you know, I know infosec de uh, departments like to spend money, so um, you know it's entirely up to them. But I, you know, personally, I, you know, the idea that this is purpose built for Mac, so you, it doesn't do things like those. Certainly, the McAfee uses kernel extensions, which are built into Mac OS, which Apple are deprecating, right? So the next version of Mac OS, you will not be able to use McAfee in its current state. So, you know, certainly have a look at any tools you're using today if they're using kernel extensions. Um, find out from that development company what their you know their their stance is on and, and what the uh, development sort of uh, roadmap looks like to make sure that they're going to be compatible with big sur because as they stand today those those products will simply not work um whereas something like giant protect again because we've got all the you know 18 years of apple knowledge we've got day zero support you know it's not it's it's purpose built for mac it's ready to go so it's not going to suddenly stop working when big sewer comes out cool perfect um can you advise on the best course for mastering jump composer and learning more about packaging and more specialist or complicated software packages so composer i wonder if we get into you get into a bit of composer on the jump yeah, you do a bit on two, two and three hundred, but yeah. it, it's a weird one because 
the 300 obviously from when I did it to what it is now has changed it does change mm -hmm. um I wouldn't say you you'd learn specific a composer um feel free to reach out to myself um we'd be happy to you know look at how we can help offer training for things like that yeah I, I also I think it's probably if you're doing a lot of custom stuff in composer there's probably ways we can manipulate those packages without having to go into composer and maybe doing it via jamf pro instead <laughs> yeah i was literally going to say that i think certain things depending if you're using dmgs packages um from what jump used to be used for a long time ago with dmgs which was um you know uh user preferences and things like that yeah, that can yeah. now all be done with plists which can be pushed out through jump via uh, so. custom scripts and things like that so, again also another another good one if you're struggling with packages like go on jump nation but obviously you know reach out to gary yes. and myself but yes yeah reach out to me start. Uh, the next one, to use Azure authentication, can this be used without having to buy Jamf Connect via Apple School Manager and then add the user into Jamf? So you can do this with Apple School Manager and Azure, you can create federated Apple IDs. So that means is that, you know, the Apple ID that users can sign into like an iPad or an iPhone with um, will be their Azure credentials. Um, during enrollment, so like during device enrollment on um, Mac OS, you can authenticate against Azure. So it will create a local account of those initial credentials. But if you want to ensure that the passwords maintain synchronization, or if you want the ability to log in with multiple different accounts, that's where something like Jamf Connect will come in. So uh, Jamf Connect will allow you to you know, log in and log out with whoever you wish, give them admin or standard accounts based on their uh, role within Azure. Um, and then again, we'll ensure that the passwords stay in sync with those Azure credentials moving forward as well. Excellent. Um, someone has asked if they're interested in the demo version, where would I get that? But I believe someone has posted that already in there in the chat. Yeah, I'll reach out to you again, Academia can send you the credentials. I know um, Jan and stuff was, was helping some folks out with that the other day, Gary. So um, yeah, reach out to their, their Academia representative and I'm um, sure we can get you up to speed yeah. with that. Yeah, I think the, the link to the installers, the installers are just the installers. Um, there is a there is actually a trial process that you go through with a with a, you know somebody from the from academia or jam. Cool. Um, the last one is auto binds to AD via config or a script. Um, I mean, I could probably answer this. It, well, it all really depends on workflow, really. Whatever you yeah. find is best. Um, either way, it's totally fine. There's no right or wrong way, really. Um, depends what you're trying to do as part of the AD bind as well. You might want to do something else as well as bind or set certain preferences. Yeah, I would also say that everything I've talked about today would suggest you wouldn't want to bind to AD at all. <laughs> so, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. It's, um, um, I guess it's a question of what, what benefits are you getting out of AD because uh, of the tools that are out there now built in from macOS or provided by us at Jamf will kind of negate the need to be bound to Active Directory um, and tends to cause more issues. You know, we talk about those password problems. Yeah. Uh, things like that. But again, also, if it's relating to Jamf Connect, then you do not need to find the machine. So just to keep that in mind, those need to be bound to AD. Correct, yeah. Uh, we have a, a kind of context question here. So working in the uni context, okay? So our local accounts are cleared on devices after usage. So in the past, we have used default user templates to standardize the fresh login by removing first launch, nag screens, and software preferences, et cetera. Yeah. Is this something that can be achieved with Jump Composer? We also use a lot of software installers, and I can't even say that word, idiosyncratic licensing process. Uh, what are the limitations of Jump Composer, and what is the point at which we will have to fall back on custom scripts? Oh, that's a tough one. Well, I guess, you know, from a from a login perspective, again, you can suppress a lot of that stuff with NDM now. Um, again, with device enrollment, so you know they wouldn't see those those choices. Um, and then when it turn, comes down to applications, I mean, honestly, I don't know how much use of Composer has done that. I would say if you're looking at going real deep into the world of Composer, that I'd maybe take a step back and look at actually what we're trying to achieve because it would suggest to me that we're missing out on a lot of modern functionality that is in the Apple frameworks to to mobile uh, to manage devices. 
Um, so yeah, there's definitely applications that need some configuration, but I imagine most of that can be achieved uh, in other ways. So I would, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think that sounds like something that, yeah, that's a nice, maybe a nice call for, you know, Gary and maybe myself or someone to go through and get into and see what kind of consultancy or whatever stuff you guys can provide. Yeah, I think, you know, when you talk about, you know, templates to standardize fresh logins, removing first launch stuff, things like that, um, you know, there, there, there might be other ways to look at it. Everyone's using plist now to kind of, um, determine what's happening within applications and things like that. So there may be another angle that we can look at it. So um, yeah, That's reach out. The kind of question that you can post on Jamf Nation and you'll get a lot of different other people's opinions on it. But if you want to yeah. just talk to, to somebody at Jamf about it and, uh, and and somebody that knows their audience like Gary, then yeah, feel free to reach out to us. Cool, perfect. Um, excellent, what we'll do now is we will put the thank you video on um with the lovely music and me and ross will stick around for a little bit anyway yeah so in the chat box actually i've got another one come through so i might as well do this one for you uh in azure there is a tool with accounts that syncs their accounts back so nothing is saved locally in terms of documents etc can jump connect do the same without having to create local accounts no no there you go <laughs> <laughs> so jump connect all jump connect does is 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 kind of parse the identity part so the username and password and create a local account on mac os um, you could then use something like onedrive uh to have you know kind of the synchronization of the desktop and documents for that that user i've seen that be a part of certainly on the windows side and, and and also another product like dropbox i think they're doing that now as well but um yeah like those mobile kind of roaming profiles but from azure I mean, regardless of the technology, I'm always wary of it. So, um... yeah, I th it's it's a really difficult one working with lots of clients at the moment as well. We you know we still have people using network homes and things like that, and it all boils down to such a bigger picture, really, what you're trying to achieve in the long run. We've got people using scripts and stuff to do this and that, uh, when really so so many things can be solved with a local account and having to purge it at a later date. Yeah. So it's a re that's a really, really broad question um, at the same time. So it's really, really difficult to answer. But um, yeah, I think now we're, even with we Jump Connect stuff, the way that we're kind of standardizing local accounts now is the best way to move forward. Apple will mm -hmm. kind of agree with that, that workflow as well. Um, so Windows yeah. Windows do as well, right? <laughs> like for the most part. <laughs> so it's not a... Yeah, I mean, it's just the user library stuff as well in, in Mac has always been that kind of yeah. issue that people have managed to get around, but more people are kind of standardizing the local accounts now. Uh, it gives the user a much better experience overall. Yeah. So yeah, another kind of broader question really. So please reach out to us if you yeah, know. Yeah, we'll uh, our email address is in the chat. Maybe pop them in if people want to ask. Yes, I've popped mine in there. Let me pop yours in as well. Is it bad that I'm having to go and check what yours is? No, <laughs> I can pop it in the chat as well if you, if you want to do that. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I thought it was that. I wanted to double check. Same, same kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, go for it, please, if you can. Screen share. There you go. I just put the wrong email address in there. I'll pop yeah, mine in again as well for everyone. Um, there you go. Yep, so I uh, just want to say thank you to everyone who's joined. We uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for your questions as well. And Ross, thank you very much. Oh, we'll, yeah, uh, the questions at the end there. We'll, we'll pop the video on. Um, so thank you, everyone. But we'll still be sticking around for a bit if you have any extra questions to ask us. So thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.